If you're doing VCA methods this year, you need to understand this concept before your first sack. In this case, we're asked to sketch the derivative of this function here, but we're not actually given the function rule. We have to base our derivative shape purely off the features of this graph. So what we need to do is analyze the features of this graph, and I've got three key features or three key moments in this graph here, and based on these features, we're gonna be able to sketch the derivative of this function. So as we start from x approaching negative infinity and going to the right, we can see that we have an asymptote at y is equal to negative one. But it doesn't actually matter what this value is. What you can see is that the derivative is gonna be a very small value because we're tending towards that asymptote there. So what we can say is that the derivative is going to be relatively small, but what's more important is that is the derivative small or zero? In this case, it's just very small because it's approaching the asymptote, and we know that asymptotes allow our function to get very, very close to it, but this function will never actually flatten off. So the derivative is always gonna be greater than zero at this point. What's even more important to note is that the derivative is going to be positive because as you can see, the tangential line is going in this positive direction there. So what we can say is that the derivative is also gonna be positive in this region as well, but just note that it's a very small positive value. Now at this middle point here, we can see that the derivative is actually at its largest magnitude because the graph keeps on going up and up and up until we get to this point here. We have a tangent that's roughly a tangent of one. We don't really have to know the exact value of this tangent here. We just have to know that it's the largest value before the graph starts to taper off again. So this here, is where the derivative is the largest. So I'll just say dy dx with a up arrow there. Now at this final point here, we have exactly the same features at this starting point here. We have a derivative that's relatively small and it's a positive value, but it's approaching zero because we're tending towards this asymptote now here. So we can say that it's a positive small value, but it's going to get smaller and smaller and closer to zero as we go towards positive infinity. So if we kind of combine all these features together and get a rough derivative shape, what it's going to look like is a very small derivative at the start. And by very small, it's kind of implying that we have an asymptote at y is equal to zero along this x-axis here. So we're gonna start off with a very small positive derivative and it's going to have a maximum on the derivative at this x, y-axis here where x is equal to zero. And again, the value doesn't really matter as long as you have the peak along this y-axis here. And then we're gonna have the same shape reflected in the positive x region there. So we're gonna start off with a very small positive derivative. We're gonna to go towards some sort of peak, which is going to be along the y-axis. And then we're gonna have exactly the same symmetrical shape going towards positive infinity. Now, this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis, and we know this asymptote here has an equation of y is equal to zero. But we actually know no other points along this curve. We know the asymptote equation is y is equal to zero because that's where the derivative is approaching, but we don't know the peak here and we don't know any other points here because we're not given any information about our original function. However, the most important thing that we need to understand in this question is not only the general shape of this curve here, but just understanding that the derivative is going to have an asymptote at y is equal to zero. So this is our function done.